Hi, this is Paul from Pear Tree Education, and today we're going to be speaking about collaboration. This video is going to cover student to student collaboration, student to teacher, and also teacher to teacher collaboration. I find collaboration to be one of the most beautiful aspects of 21st century education that's missing from the mainstream education that kids are currently going through. While the internet has promoted this kind of collective mentality where we share ideas with people from all over the world, when it comes to face-to-face -face interaction with our peers, we seem to be less willing to make that effort. And this is another thing I'm going to be addressing in this video, the reasons for this. But let's get on to these different types of collaboration. Firstly, student-to-student -student collaboration, something that very rarely takes place in classrooms, even though we praise teamwork. Most of the time, students are working independently. And the key reason for that is we want to be able to assess students for their individual abilities. But collaboration is a key aspect of the learning process. By peer teaching, you're actually improving your own ability. So in other words, by teaching other people, you understand the material that you're teaching even more so because you have to break it down into smaller components, which forces you to try to understand at a higher level what you're actually teaching rather than assume that you understand. But what about being on the other end? What if you're the one that's receiving the help? How does that feel? Well, let's put it this way. And there's only one teacher in the classroom and there's maybe 30 kids. If, if you've only got one teacher, that means that the chances of you getting help anytime during a class are quite minimal. So therefore it's better to have help from a peer than no one at all. And another great aspect of peer teaching is that the person teaching you is going to be teaching you at your mental level. Even though they may be better at the subject, they're going to communicate with you like you speak yourself. You're going to understand 99.9% .9 of everything they say. Student to student collaboration is something I use or have used for many years now. My classes work in different ways. I like to keep my students on their toes, so I don't necessarily like to have very predictable class structures. Uh, I, I may walk into the classroom and set the students a problem and then just leave them to it. Or I may come in and do a mini presentation and then have them take over. But either way, there'll be a huge component to the class, which is very much based around student to student collaboration, where they're teaching each other and problem solving together. Student to student collaboration is not a clear cut thing. It's not a question of one person understanding and the other student doesn't. The thing is that no one truly understands and that's the whole point is that both students are understanding better than they did before because they're going through this teaching and learning process simultaneously. In many situations it may be a case that neither student really understands and that they're both trying to understand at the same time but helping each other along the way. Moving on to student-teacher collaboration, I feel that like this is a particularly difficult topic to talk about because at the moment there is in some cases a misconception about what student-teacher collaboration should be and quite often it stems down to the teacher shouldering all the responsibility and the students having this huge voice in the classroom and basically dictating to the teacher what they should be teaching, how they should be teaching it, and basically creating the curriculum for the teacher, which I don't think is student-teacher collaboration. I think that's almost like the, there's a change in role there. I think the main aspect of student-teacher collaboration is that both the students and the teacher share a responsibility for the learning process. In other words, accountability is placed on all shoulders, not just the teachers. A simple way of demonstrating this is the students telling the teacher when they don't understand something, or suggesting a different way of explaining it, or suggesting different uses of technology or different forms of learning that could be used to actually better the learning process. And then the teacher would obviously be receptive to that and, and maybe debate those ideas. The students can also bring up things that they want to learn about, so things that basically are almost like tangents from what's being covered in the classroom and it stimulates new ideas about, okay, we're talking about this topic and now I want to learn about this, which is kind of connected to that. And it just brings in ideas your teacher wouldn't ordinarily have thought about. And this happens a lot in my classrooms because you, you end up teaching one thing and then you end up segueing off because a student raises a, a very interesting point and of course I'm not going to be able to predict every single segue that, uh, that's necessary in a class and so the class has become very organic and that's the structure of a student-teacher collaboration is that it's organic, it just naturally happens, you, don't, you can't plan for these things. And the final form of collaboration is teacher-to-teacher. This is where teachers have time to actually co-plan a curriculum, to give feedback to one another, to debate or discuss student needs, uh, what's going on in the classroom, the dynamics, uh, learning requirements, challenges, ways to better the classes, better their teaching style, everything. 
And uh, there's no better person to do that with than a colleague who's actually in the same profession and understands your position and has the same level of expertise. In all aspects of collaboration, whether it's student-student, student-teacher, teacher-teacher, it's about self-improvement by helping other people, but also uh, being challenged to go to another level. Whereas if you're in isolation, you kind of get wrapped up in your own bubble where you are your own judge. But when you compare yourself with other people, there's this new bar that you can set, whether it be someone with similar abilities to you, where you are forced to improve to, to better yourself or someone with completely different abilities that you don't have and then you broaden your horizon. In other words, you develop horizontally and vertically. And collaboration helps us to become mentally stronger. And this is quite controversial because at the moment we believe that the more independent we are, the stronger we are because we're able to be self-sufficient. But there's a huge weakness behind that in that we're incapable of valuing the strengths of other people because we believe that we have to be superior to them at everything. And that comes down to insecurities that we're, we're afraid of someone being better than us. So we just have to convince ourselves that we are better than them. And by not having the opportunity to even like communicate with them, to share ideas, we basically eliminate the need to find out that someone's actually better than us at something. But unless we're willing to do that, we're not going to improve. We, we need people around us with different abilities, better abilities in order to improve. So at this point, I'd like to introduce the Finnish education system. And then this video is by no means going to cover all aspects of that. But just focusing on this idea of collaboration. If you consider that in Finland, learning is a kind of team process, uh, whether you're student student or teacher teacher or between the teacher and the students in all aspects learning is kind of a collective effort it's not a sense of competition and so in the Finnish education system you don't have the the best students and the worst students in different classes you have them together because then that that peer teaching takes place and unlike most American and Canadian schools Finnish teachers don't teach in isolation they work with another teacher to plan the curriculum to develop it to talk about students and therefore they become better teachers they're not competing against one another they're basically using each other to improve and from my research it seems that the key element that makes Finnish education better than North American education is trust students trust one another teachers trust one another and teachers and students trust one another there's a sense of respect and trust I'd go beyond that to actually say that parents trust teachers as well and I think perhaps that last example is something that's going to trigger bells in your mind that yeah there are many many cases in North American society where parents do not trust the teachers and then you might have a case of teachers not trusting other teachers or students not trusting other students um, because of competitiveness. So in other words, competitiveness promotes mistrust. They're completely opposite of what Finland promotes. And I think that's a really unhealthy trait. I think if we can, with time, lower the sense of competitiveness, raise the trust level, I think that our education systems would benefit hugely from that because everyone would feel part of a team rather than competing against each other in the same class. Another thing we need is time. At the moment, we are trying to cram so much into our daily routines that there just isn't time for teachers to get together to co-plan curriculum. There's not enough time in the classroom for students to work together because it's seen to be inefficient. It's much faster just to plow through material. And the organic kind of growth of the class through student-teacher collaboration has another aspect to it. And that's not just the time that's required to develop the class, but also the fact that there's going to be this lack of structure. That you haven't planned the class, it's kind of planned itself. And I find that Western education is just absolutely obsessed with planning. And this means that students have very little input in the class. Anyway, to wrap up this video, I'm just going to say that collaboration is a very central part of 21st century education that we have to start developing. It's almost non-existent over here and uh, the main reason for that is this lack of trust and, and this sense of competitiveness that we have at the moment. If you're interested in more information about Finland's education system I'm going to be putting some links below. The next video I'm going to be bringing out though is about student-centered learning and if you have enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate a rating and if you haven't already done so you can subscribe above. This is Paul from Petri Education. Thanks for watching.